just about to start. Hello, everybody. This is my new personal best in Mystical Ninja starring Goemon. I'm going to be doing some uh, post commentary for it today. First, we're going to get a reset coming up any second here. I think I start farming a few coins and then get a little choked about how badly the camera glitched on the sign, and then we're going to reset. Now, the reason I'm doing post commentary is because I did this run without using a mic. Because I was starting to notice, after spending long times streaming PB attempts for this game recently, that when I used mic and I got mad at something, I would express my salt in a vocal manner. And that would cause this cascading effect that would lead to more mistakes. And um, I, feel like, I felt like using a mic was actually slowing my progress in learning a game. Which is unfortunate because it's so much fun to talk to chat. Um, but oddly enough, today I did a, I got a PB without a mic, and I have, I got more viewers than I usually get. So maybe uh, maybe it's not so bad that people didn't have to listen to me while I was playing the game. Um, so this is not the PB. This is the run before it. I just wanted to set the stage a little bit. But another reason why I'm doing post commentary is because this run, although it's not a world record, it kind of deserves commentary because a lot of really weird stuff happened in it. Uh, that might be fun to talk about. Uh, I'm going to assume that most people watching this have seen a uh, speedrun of this game before. Um, and I'll explain things along the way a little bit. But if you haven't seen a speedrun of this, um, prepare to be pretty surprised at some of the things that this game can do if you're familiar with it. So we start a reset. That's uh, just put in place by the Japanese runners who ran this game long before us. And this came at the end of a long day of resetting. I reset there because I start the timer one second too early. And I just figured um, I'll reset so that the timer is a little more accurate. I'm not really sure what's going on with the audio here, but uh, I got pretty used to it while I was listening to this VOD just for a few minutes, so it's not too bad. And I'm still pretty happy about the run. So we run, run along the edge of the walls there. It speeds you up. It's a long known trick. And here's the sign glitch. Luckily I just get the instant clip up, up, up top. Uh, there's a much faster way. There's a way to save like an additional five seconds if you go inside the sign and then press A followed by B one frame later. And on the same frame you press B you hold up on the joystick. I wasn't even given the option to attempt that trick because I got the instant clip. Um, but my consistency has been a little bit bad on that trick and it's not necessary for me to save time. So I'm not going to reset over it even though it is so early in the run. So entering the castle here um, at, a, at a 112 is not bad. If you're going to get there in sub 110 that's really good. That usually means you got the, the, the slash trick pretty fast. Mukori Slash. Uh, Mukori Slash is the name of the trick. It um, translates from Japanese as a bulge slash. Mukori is the word they use for when like you get a boner and your pants start bulging, like pitching a tent. Anyway, this is the coin collect. I hate collecting coins in this game. I've always hated it. It's super annoying that every time you reset, you have to go back to this room and smash pots forever. It feels like forever. It's like two minutes. And uh, the worst is that oftentimes you'll swing at a pot and it just won't break. Most commonly, the fifth pot in the room, that one that just broke there, very frequently doesn't break when I swing at it. I'm, I must be doing something wrong in my approach, or my angle, or it's random, or something. But I get frustrated, even though it only costs like a second to turn around and break it. That to me is, is the most annoying shit that can ever happen. Um, so a good amount of Ryu to end, Rio to end this on is uh, up for debate. I personally can make it through the game with like 1040 or more, uh, but but more recently I've been collecting higher amounts to be safer. This run does include a lot of safety strats because I was really getting fed up with the fact that I didn't have a, had any PB in like a year and a half in this game. Now I did take like s seven months off to where I just didn't play it at all. 
because my last PB that I got took a long time to get as well. But I was just really choked that it had been so long since I'd had a PB that I really started to do a lot more safety strats. And part of that includes being conservative with your coins, and uh, I, I like collecting a higher amount. So this one gets, uh, let's see, 960 on the second to last trip through the room. And if I get all of these, it'll be 1080. If I miss one, maybe 1075. All right, 1080. And I still managed to save time. Um, all right. Throw your coins to hover over gaps. That's how I use the first six coins <laughs> in the run there. And saving 5.8 seconds on that split, 317 is okay. Sub 315 is really good. And my gold split, uh, as you can see before if you read the splits, is an additional five seconds ahead of this. A little a little bit less, four, four point something. But matching that requires that I get the Mokori Slash at the beginning. Now this room went relatively well. Uh, I take a safer, a safer method than the world record uses, or than Shoff, the second place holder of, of the game. He uses a more risky strat in that room too. I suppose I'm going to grind it out and practice it for my next PB. I like cutting that corner and that jump, it saves a little bit of time. And I feel like my movement here is pretty good because when I'm doing this wall run, you can barely see that enemy on screen by the time I bypass it. And 418 to that door is pretty good. Um, anything under 420, 420 before you get to the green room is good. That's one of the first weird things that happens in this run. I try to attack that floor mat and I miss and have to turn around and hit it. Sure, it wasted some time, but that's just the start of the weird time losses I had in this run that didn't stop me. That's that's why I'm commentating, is so much weird shit happens. Just keep paying attention. Like, if I hadn't been on my toes, this would have died this would have died very soon. Now this room, the gold key room went really, really well. Um Generally, I've lately been missing the large enemy to the left in this room, where you, th you, you use your pipe to hit it the first time, and then you throw a coin at the jumping light blue doll, and then you throw one at the dark blue giant doll, and I usually miss that second throw towards the giant doll, but luckily I got it there. I've started figuring it out a little more. It's, uh, I'm shooting too far down on the joystick angle, usually, so I, I adjusted it a little higher up on the joystick angle, closer to true left rather than down left, and it worked out. And um, I'm listening to the music here every time I do the run. So I'm going to go into great detail because this is post-commentary. When I'm listening to the music in this game, in this castle particularly, there are certain cadences that I want to reach before I hit that elevator. You can see I mess with the camera there. I'm actually tapping the camera along to the music. And uh, then reaching this room, I like to reach it in under 5 minutes and 50 seconds, which I did. Uh, it's, it's not that bad. It's really good if you can get there in under 5 minutes and 45 seconds. And then here's where I take a big safety strat. There's a, a jump you can do on the right hand side of this room where you jump out of the water up into the corner and you skip having to do that walking. I hate it. I hate that jump and it has actually cost me runs before. So I stopped doing it. And I saved 55.5 se- oh, some spoilers. Anyway, that's a perfect uh, chain pipe skip really happy when I get those. Really really salty when I don't get that, actually. That sort of worked it into my repertoire. I pick up some HP there. That's a kind of a weird thing. This doesn't cost me any time, but it's kind of weird getting HP from that enemy, because now I'm at full health. Uh, I got enough coins to extend there so I don't have to swim as far, saving a few frames, or who knows how much time. DCX might know. But I have full health here, so I'm just like, ha! I think that's the very first time ever I have not picked up that golden dongo, keen dongo. Because I'm already at full health and it wouldn't do anything and it just seemed funny to just walk next to it. Uh, anyway, this time is pretty good. 7-11 um, into this room is usually really good. I I'm thinking 7-11 into the room before this is, is acceptable. But here I am, 7-11 into a following room. so. And uh, lately I've adjusted this strategy where you manipulate the camera so you can start walking during this cutscene. And uh, if you just stand right where that enemy is, you can hold left. Um, oh, this is where I got a follow from Nirsu. Shoutouts to, to that user for following me. Thank you very much. But yeah, you can move during that cutscene and if you stand right where the enemy, the NPC is, you can just hold left. 
and then you count 12 steps after the third door opens, this is an audio cue, and after the 12th step you hold up left, and then you usually get in. Uh, now Kongo-chan didn't go perfectly, and if, if Kongo-chan had gone perfectly, I would have been probably closer to 12 seconds ahead after this. Uh, but you can see there's a little mistake coming up. Basically, you have to you have to hit Kongo Chan as soon as as soon as he stops blinking red. That means he's vulnerable again. So that was pretty good. There wasn't too much time where he wasn't blinking red. And then uh, here we'll, you'll get another shot to look at. You have to go around him. It's, it's kind of tricky to time it. And there I got hit, and while I was hit, I was stunned. I couldn't jump and attack. So there was a lot longer period of time where Kongo-chan was vulnerable, but not taking damage. And that sadly led to me missing a phase skip speedrun trick there. And uh, we got two laser cycles instead. And that cost me some time. Mostly that cost me the time that Kongo is invulnerable during the lasers coming out. And then additionally, the time it took me to hit, hit Kongo when uh, I missed the first time. But this is still a really good time. Usually I'm I'm okay to lose time on this split. Because it's it's stupid to care about it, because there's so much later in the run that's important. Uh no, that's not the that's not the official title of Kongo Chan, that's just what everybody calls that boss in Japan. Cause he's so kawaii. I apologize for the audio issues. I'm gonna need. I I, I have a really bad streaming setup because uh, I'm I have a bit of financial problems. But one day I'll save up and improve. Maybe by then I'll have a better PB too. Anyway, yeah, having a seven-second time save on this split is unusual. You, I'm used to getting out of there with maybe a five-second red split. Uh, I'm even gonna not reset with like an eleven-second red split just because there's a trick coming up, which is Benkei skip. If you've seen a run, you're familiar. Um, that is so important to do quickly that it's like I just don't want to reset until I at least get a chance at that skip. <clears throat> and uh, one thing I wanted to mention about that little cutscene, the little conversation I had with the Lord and Princess. Um, mashing through the text there, you can listen to the music and you can actually like save or lose like a second if you mash improperly through the text. It's a lot harder than Ocarina of Time because only the A button will advance text. So this is the map glitch, which despawns a lot of stuff. You just hold C right. Um, the best way, optimal way, is you can actually let go of it while your character is still moving, while Goemon's still running, and then it instantly will take you to the next s screen. Um, that's the optimal way. I managed to get it on both screen transitions there. Um, the, wor the slightly worse way is if you run into the screen transition first and you see Goemon stop running, stop moving and then you let go and then you transition, that's a little slower because you've wasted frames walking into the transition. And then there's the worst way, which is you let go too early and he, he rises in the water. And then the movement up those platforms is important for saving the most amount of time. On this little section, and again I listen to the music for how long it takes the Monbans to run to the door, and uh, it was a little earlier than usual, so that was okay. Um, there's a swag trick coming up that I have terrible success rate at. That's the fence jump. You can jump from that fence to the next platform. And it actually saves a little bit of time and it looks so cool. And I've had a very low success rate at all the swag tricks in this game lately. Uh, I've been more focused on just trying to finish runs. I'll practice them. We'll get there eventually. We'll get there. We've got to take baby steps. Uh, there's also usually little fun things I like to do with the uh, C left button and changing the weapons. It makes a little sound and I like to make little beats with it, but I didn't want any fancy crap today. I just wanted a PB and I got it, so. I'm not sure about the movement through this, but I feel like um, jumping up the task jumps on slopes forwards, but I think it's only going to save time in a task because you have to be straight parallel to the slope for it to move you any faster in its frames. That being said, this area could be faster if I went for a trick that I just bypassed. It's another sort of swaggy trick, but it actually saves 8 seconds. You can do a one frame jump on that slope, and it has to be a good one too. It can't just be any old one frame jump. It has to be pretty precise, and it can land you up on the ledge above it, and it saves you having to walk around. I didn't even go for it anymore. It's another one of those things where I was just so fed up with my success rate. It was so, so low. 
that I just stopped even trying it. <clears throat> but here we are, this is just uh, movement through this section. It has normal wall running. Um, sometimes I like to let go of C right here to make the house pop up. I don't know if it affects the time of the game at all, but it's funny to see the house pop up. I didn't do it that time. And again, I always listen to the music to tell how I'm, whether I'm ahead or behind uh, an average run. So when I get to the door, something really weird is going to happen, so watch the screen. That's a cool little clip you can do on that fence. It's been known about for a really long time. Alright, this is so weird. I let go too late and start falling um, on the outside of the door because I let go of the map glitch too late and it clipped me out of bounds. And then I just panicked and held down and it managed to get me through the door. And this is actually still a really good time for me by my standards. And even by world record standards, getting to Yaichan at this point in the game is pretty fast. Uh, but that was so... I, I freaked out when that happened, when you saw me clip out of bounds there. I thought the run was over. I thought I just lost it like two and a half minutes or something like that. But it managed. we managed to keep it going. So that's one of the really weird things that happened in the run. Um, now mashing text to get through Yaichan's cutscene seems a little less significant than the the castle keeper, the lord, I guess his name is, because it's so much shorter. There's a fewer amount of boxes to mash through. <clears throat> Coming up is Benkei Skip. We will see how that goes in this run. Uh, today, I was having a pretty good track record with Benkei Skip. Only one run died to it. Um, it sucks when runs die to Benkei Skip because it feels like you've made no progress at all. And that was extremely fast. That was a very good, uh, very good skip right there. And it landed really close to the door. All I had to do was jump and enter the door. And that's pretty much how I want them to go every time. That was sub 1455 at least. That's a, uh, that's really quick. If I had managed to get the, the biggest time save before that would have been the the ledge jump in the mountain climb, and that would have saved an additional eight seconds. This would have been very very fast. And then coming up, we're going to find the dragon. Um, here, hold on a second. So, we're going to get to the dragon, and there's a, a dialogue skip you can do at the end of the dragon. Japanese refer to it as Kaiwa Cancel, which translates to Conversation Cancel, which I think is a better name than Dialogue Skip. But you have to pause on a single frame that the dialogue box pops up, and uh, it saves an additional amount of time which would help skyrocket this run into a very good PV pace. What with having a very quick Benkei skip like that, that's already going to save me a lot of time. Uh, you see in the splits possible time save at 35 seconds. That's with the skip and... that's with both tricks, the Benkei skip and the dialogue skip being really really fast. But it does not include the mountain climb which saves that extra 8 seconds, so that gold could be improved if I manage to get the trifecta of tricks. And then you had the, the, the fence jump on there, and you get the, the swag, and I could, I could uh, have a very fast gold on that one in the future. My splits are not the same as most people's. They're closer to Pykin splits than they are to the world record splits. Uh, the world record uses more splits, and it splits at different times for all of them. And... Shaf, the Japanese runner, uses less splits and splits at different times. So this weird enemy pattern I'm getting here is all dog faces. All the Franker Zs. And one came at a very inconvenient time, and honestly I wasn't even able to conceivably try to get the dialogue skip without slowing down. And I've never really worked at it with a, a slow setup before. I know there is slow setups you can do where you try to inch your way forward and get it, but sadly the uh, the enemy spawns made it so that my normal way of doing it, which is to just jump into the into the loading zone and press pause, was pretty much inconceivable to do. I threw a coin there too early, that wasted a bit of time. He was still invulnerable. He's still invulnerable for quite a while after rotating. After he stops rotating. Uh, this is the mind control robot. 
looks like a top. He's controlling the dragon to kidnap children for the main antagonist's stage production that they're taking over Japan in order to put on. They're aliens. So this is actually a good dragon, but a bad robot. And he takes six hits. Usually I throw coins at him. You can hit him with the pipe too, which saves coins, which you need later in the game. But uh, I, I, I usually have enough coins anyway. Ugh. Knock on wood with that. Like, you know what I mean. I uh, usually have enough coins, but it, it, it can get some fucking dicey sometimes. Uh, and if I use the pipe, though, I can end up getting too close to him and taking a hit. And if you haven't seen anybody take a hit on the dragon during that boss fight, it completely glitches the fuck out and you lose all control of your character doing the hit stun. And you start teleporting all around the dragon and you can very easily fall off. But anyway, the boss went down and here we are into this cutscene well under 19 minutes, which is very good. I'm usually happy with almost anything under 19 minutes here. So the fact that it was like under 1950 by quite a bit, like that's that's this is a, this is a very good pace run by anybody's standards, but especially by my standards since I had a PB that was so bad before this. Still pretty bad. So this is Koryuta. It roughly translates to small dragon. Koryuta has been confirmed best waifu. And he uh, was the one getting mind controlled. He can turn into a dragon. So this dialogue is uh, skippable, but um, you don't get the flute after it. And you need the flute to save a lot of time later in the run. There is a way to skip it. And that would be part of a low percent category. Ah, welcome Jado. Thanks for posting that. Jado informs me that even if you somehow manage to attack the spinning top boss with a higher damage weapon, which is not possible outside of using a cheat engine, that boss will still take six, six hits, so he doesn't have regular HP like Kongo-chan or uh, like most of the enemies, or even like Surami, a boss later in the game. But he has a six hit count. That is interesting. Alright, here comes the stair climb, Kompiro-san. So, when you're jumping up Kompiro-san, you basically want to spend as little time on the ground as possible while you're going up the stairs. And you want to skip two stairs at a time. This, is, this to me, is the epitome of an N64 game. Stairs that you can't walk up. How many fucking N64 games have stairs that you can't walk up? Whose bright idea was that? That every game on this console should just have stairs that require you to jump. It's so funny to me. So there was a little flub up there. But uh, overall, this is still a pretty decent climb. Again, listening to the musical cues to tell me how far ahead I am of my usual. And uh, there's a certain note where I jump coming into this screen that I'm on right now. And if I manage to jump before that note, I think I'm doing okay. If I jump on that note, still okay. Anytime after that note, I'm a little bit like, oh, I messed up. A lot of people love the music for Computer san yeah. So now we get the new weapon, which does higher damage, but it's also required to open a gate to um, to get through the next castle. I almost wonder, I, I'm pretty sure that even if this gate wasn't here, this would almost be faster than not collecting it. It might not be, though. That'd be interesting to time. If it were possible to get through the next castle without the coin... without the fire coins would it save time to skip getting them that's a good question probably not I, I honestly think that they save that much time and that if you skip getting them you just have to walk you might still have to watch that flute cutscene because you'd have to walk through this town so the auto is really fucking up right now that's too bad because this is one of my favorite songs in the game Yeah. Uh, this, by the way, for anyone, anybody interested in helping me out, I need an, I need new shit to stream with. This is this is getting out of hand, but <clears throat> yeah, this uh, this music is is some of the best in the game, and I'm really upset that it fucked up like this. 
Uh, because I wasn't using mic, I was listening to the TV during this time, so I didn't even know that this was happening. Anyway, we get that time stop glitch here. Moving at a pretty good pace uh, so far. Basically, this entire split is mostly movement based. Sounds like my mic is going out too. Yeah, this is uh, normal for my stream. I don't know why you guys are only hearing me in one ear. How about now? That might have fixed. That might have been happening the whole time too. So I apologize to listeners who uh, could only hear me in one ear. <laughs> maybe maybe uh, maybe I'll put listen to this in speakers. But I was listening to this on a TV when I was playing. <clears throat> And I could hear in the music that I got to the door at a good part of the music that showed I had good movement. I also like messing with the camera during this this little flute playing thing. Fuck, does this ever fix? Did anybody watch the video live? Was it doing this the entire fucking game? You're all hearing this, right? You're all hearing this audio fuck up, right? It's like stuttering, getting loud and quiet. How did you guys keep watching the entire uh, the run <laughs> while this was happening? That's amazing. It's not the game, it was Amarek. Because I was listening to the game through TV and it sounded fine. What the fuck is... Oh. Alright. Anyway, this is a boring part of the run anyway, so... These technical issues don't really matter. Basically, we're just walking to this next mini-game to learn how to make Ibisumaru. Shrink. Mini Ibisu, as you all know. It's used to glitch the shit out of the game. Um, I've been told it's not required to beat the game. There are glitches you can use to bypass all of its required uses. It would definitely make the game a lot longer and a lot less consistent. So if a low percent category existed without this glitch, without this trick of Mini Ibisu Mario, then it would be an incredibly challenging category to complete. So far, not RTA viable. No one's ever done the tricks required to skip these, uh... Oh yeah, okay, here's another fucked up part of the run. Swinging my mallet, but I managed to get hit by that enemy anyway. I'm thinking I got one heart left. And there's the candy there, and I know there's an enemy there too. And I get hit by the enemy. So, uh, that happened. My PB includes me dying on this minigame. Which is a huge time loss. And really, really fucking annoying. It's like an instant reset in most cases. And I'm honestly a little surprised I didn't instantly reset. That fucking shit is so annoying. Yeah, I got wrecked there. Um, basically, that first enemy that hit me knocked me back into where the guy who drops bombs could see me, and that's it. Just it was a it's just a downward spiral of bullshit that um, you could definitely blame on me, but it was really also unlucky that I had to deal with that shit, and I couldn't couldn't salvage it, and here we're losing all this time. But I managed to get the last piece of candy this time. Pretty quick, too. The timer still has a 41 on it. That's pretty nice when you can get the candy while it still has a 41. Uh, the ultimate would be is... You saw where I was standing on that salt shaker thing and jumping? If the candy had landed right on my head there, that would have saved the most time. <laughs> That's like how the task would do it. The task actually would be able to jump on the, other, the taller salt shakers and then jumps and grabs the candy. Yeah, I lost uh, at least 30 seconds there. 
That's up. That's a big, big mistake. But you'll see there's a lot of a lot of weird fucking shit that goes down in this run. Like, I'm not even sure if that's the biggest mistake. Uh, now we start doing ABC slides. If you've seen speed runs, you know all about these. I'm terrible at them. I feel like I'm always going to be terrible at them. <clears throat> the most important thing is that Goemon's ass is in the, in the run. Yeah, the audio is resolved. After the boring part of the run. We'll see if it happens again later. I mean, I did just stream for six hours, so I can understand my computer being like, Yo, man, something's got to give here. The run is legit. The run is legit, and that's that's actually what's important. Because I am going to beat this time in the future. I'm not satisfied with this time. I'm motivated to improve it. But I'm enjoying watching it right now, and I'm very glad I got it today. If only it were a, f a little bit faster. <laughs> You'll see, if you don't already know the end time. I'm sure you do, because it's probably going to be in the title of the video. And I think I already hinted at it. Anyway, on our way to the castle, we got to do a lot more of those ABC slides. You saw my first one wasn't perfect. I didn't get the swag slide there. Not a lot of swag in this run so far, unfortunately, unless you count the mistakes. Uh, this one, managed to get it right away. Doesn't really get that much faster. And this castle has killed so many runs, and it's going to continue to kill so many runs for so many runners. It's just, it's, oh, it's insane what you got to do. What you're expected to do to go fast in this castle is outrageous. And you'll see what goes down for me. <clears throat> so that slide was fine, you know, second attempt, without wasting too much time on the first attempt. I managed to avoid the Cat of Shame, although I don't really mind picking up the Cat of Shame sometimes. It's a good meme. And you know, control the crane game. I take it really safe. I sit on the right hand one for a bit longer. It seems to be safer. And then this slide just doesn't seem to be working for me. I'm, I'm getting the jitters. Uh, my inputs aren't working properly. My joystick's not being flicked the right way. Finally get a slide. It doesn't work. I just give up. I abandon all hope. And I go for the really old strat where we don't even clip into this area. So this is another really weird thing about this run. And about how how weird it is that it's overall pretty fast. Because, look, I even try for a little bit here. And I'm like, well, fuck! If you're going to be such a bitch about it, I'm not even going to go in there. I'm just going to use the, the softer wall that lets me clip more easily. And say shit goodbye to those 50 coins which are absolutely essential to beating the game. <clears throat> Like, it's crazy that I'm just not resetting here, because I'm down 48 coins from literally even being able to complete the game. I need 48 coins. And then, on top of that, there's tons of instances where we just use coins to save time. So, this is messed up. I'm completely screwed at this point. I'm freaking out. I've already lost a ton of time. And then I'm just like, well, fuck it. I'm gonna get these coin pots, these coin pots. Now you'll notice my possible time save here is 42 and a half seconds. That's a pretty large amount. So I'm pissed off that I didn't get my time saves. But I haven't lost all of them yet, amazingly enough. And I completely bypassed mentioning that I took a huge safety strat in that basement water room with the blue water. And you'll know because there's red water in this room. The room with the blue water, I just did it glitchless. That wastes like 15 seconds or something like that from a perfect glitched segment through that room. So I'm wasting more of my potential time save being safe, and I'm running around with not enough coins, which means I collected both of the pots in the upper level room to get 40 coins instead of 60. So I'm really only down 20 coins because there's a 20 coin pot that I never get. So now I'm at 302, which is enough to beat the game, but not enough to do something coming up in the billiards room where we throw coins to hit the billiard balls. And then on top of that, there's other places where I might want to use coins. And then there's plenty of places after the run where we totally use coins. So I get another coin there. <laughs> so we're getting inching closer and closer. But the time is still bad because I wasn't able to clip inside the camera room. Which saves time. And then I also did the safe strat where I went glitchless in the basement area. So this ghost toys right now is ridiculous. Like, 
It's enough to make me want to reset already. And I'm doing everything I can to try and salvage it throughout this run. Backup strats on backup strats on backup strats. And this is a death warp that worked out really well, and I'm happy about that. <clears throat> Every time, If that death warp fails, that's a really bad, bad time loss. And I needed to kill that enemy in case you drop a coin. I remember that. I attacked that enemy and missed. And I was like, fuck! I need the coins! So here I managed to get on this, but... Oh yeah, I managed to take no damage coming into this room. Which is pretty nice. Uh, because... Yeah, I, I have to get that coin. So even though I missed it, I went out of the way to retrieve it. Uh, and now health management takes takes a part in this castle because of um, the the other death warp in this in this game. There's two death warps that you're allowed to do because you start with two extra lives. So that first one saves like 20 seconds or something. That first death warp you saw a little earlier, that's like no no dice that you're not going to do that death warp. That's a nice death warp. I managed to get this tightrope walk, which is very difficult. Doesn't happen every run, but I like it when I get it. Saves me time, saves me health. And now I'm thinking, there's two potential ways I can do this upcoming death warp. Um, one is I can death warp in the very next room with the invisible floors. Or they're actually, they're fake floors. And under the floors there's lava, or red water, which kills you. Or pink water, whatever you want to call it, Kool-Aid. And I'm thinking, I could take the death warp here... But there's another place you can death warp later. That ledge grab costs a little time, but you got to hear Chua! Took a hit there. Wasn't very happy about taking that hit. Uh, because I need to manage my health perfectly for the death warp that I'm trying to do now, which is riskier, more challenging, and saves a little bit more time than the one that I uh, could have easily done in the room I just finished and got the gold key in. So here I'm, I'm going to try and take it super safe and slide into that wall so that I can run to the next room and not go into this damaging water. So I'm wasting time trying to get a slide here, but I finally get it, I can run. But I clip back into bounds! So I fucked it up anyway! And I'm taking the damage that I didn't want to take. Now I'm at one hit. If I get hit unintentionally anywhere, my death warp strategies are down the drain. No hope of getting the time save on it. That coin there, remember, in the midst of all of this, we're still low on coins. So I get into this room, and I do the billiard strat I practiced a million times, and fuck it up immediately. And it makes it so that the, the red ball bounces and hits the pink ball, and I miss the pink ball, and then I'm too late to hit the orange ball. So I have to waste all of these precious coins that I already don't have enough of hitting these balls. And if I get hit by one of these balls, death warp strategies are over. This is so messed up, doing the pool strategy improvised, fully improvised, and now I'm at 300 coins exactly. And I'm so pissed off. Because that was really slow too. So even more of that 42 and a half time save that I could have gotten on this castle is now being taken away. Here we are with the death warp. The one saving grace is that I actually got to do this new death warp strategy. Or this better death warp strategy. It's been known about for a long time but it's kind of hard to plan it out with your health management. I finally got to do it. And it worked out. Still super salty at this point of the run. I'm pissed, but I know that even if I'm even with my old PB, that things could go really well. Because I've had two runs today. See, okay, look at this. I have 300 coins exactly, and I'm like, that's not going to fly. I need to fucking kill some guys. Three of those guys dropped coins! And then I was like, alright, let's just fucking go. Because... In spite of everything that happened in this castle, all the fucking shit that I had to endure and overcome, all these backup strats, all these messed up change of plans all of a sudden, I still look at my timer here and I think I'm in the green. I'm like, what the fuck? Even if this boss fight goes badly, I'm in the green. If the boss fight goes well, I'm, I'm, I'm saving more time. And I'm like, good god. I know if I'm even on par with my PB at this point that I can save a lot of time later in the run. So I just keep going. And this boss, you can get three hits on this cycle right here. And I managed to do it. So I got a triple. That's a free triple right there. I consider myself saving time every time I get that triple. But here's what happens. All right. You get Yai, Yai-chan up in here because she's going to use the flute right after this. So you got to switch to Yai-chan. 
You can get a triple on this cycle. But that was a little bit late, so I don't manage to get it. No matter. I'm only one down from... Uh, I'm, I'm still got one of the triples, so I'm only one down from perfect. I'm still going to save some time. Alright, he throws a dud firecracker. The fucking bitch! And I only get one hit on that cycle. So now it's been reverted to a normal cycle on the boss. I didn't save any extra time. That was completely RNG. I should have seen it coming. There is a way to prepare for it. But I was a little hasty and, yeah. Didn't manage to optimize that boss. But I did manage to save time on this castle after all that shit happened. The, the most effed up part is that I knew that that was going to happen too while I was doing it. So this was very calculated... Uh, calculated backup strategies and things to do to, to manage to still save time even after all that. So I felt a little bit proud of myself, but mostly I was just really pissed off at how badly that castle went. And how, hopefully in a future run, we're going to see, like, mega gold splits on this castle. Because it's, it's ridiculous. And I'm going to start grinding out um, the more risky strategies before I do future runs. I'm going to grind out IL practice on all these castles as well. So that was it. That was that's a crazy fucking part of the run that that went down. Everything from losing the mini game all the way to finishing this castle and still being 13.8 seconds ahead of my old PB. It's just r really messed up. <laughs> like I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And this is with a first try Benkei skip as well. So in future runs not dying on the mini game is going to be really weird. It's like I can be behind by 30 seconds and then be even after the mini game for getting mini Ibisu. It's just it's 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 not every single run that does shit like this. This was this was particularly weird. And now we're going back to the start of the game and heading towards the festival village, Omatsurimura. Upcoming is the cave slide. There I missed the swag fence jump. So you get two tries at it in the game and I missed them both. So this movement's a little sloppy, but right now, what I'm thinking every time I get this far in the game, every time, every run, is am I going to reset because of the cave slide or am I going to lose a minute to this cave slide? Because on a, like, for so long I was losing a minute to this cave slide every single attempt. Like for a month. Att every time, back to every attempt, would lose a minute on this slide. If I didn't, it was like a, a rare occasion. So here, I'm zooming in the camera. I'm trying every little superstitious trick in the book. I'm still not convinced as to any reason why you can't clip through this wall sometimes, and sometimes you can. Um, you know, I, I feel like there there must be something I'm doing wrong. I got to do more superstitious shit. It'll work because it's a game. It's not actually real life. It's programmed. So. I get it immediately. And I get a new follower, Ziska. Shoutouts to the new follower. Thank you very much. This is without Mike, by the way, that I got that new follower. So maybe it's a maybe it's a good thing that I wasn't talking. Yeah. And now we're here at the Matsuri Murda. With a really good slide that I couldn't believe that I got. Yeah. 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 That's what you need every run. And now Future runs are probably going to lose a minute to this slide forever. Uh, you see me attack there. I was going for a frame perfect Mokori slash that's that just like boosts you a little bit. It's always worth going for it because of swag, but sadly I missed it there. Still not a lot of swag going on in this run. So I, I usually like to do funny little stuff like make ABC Mario sing along with the music, but this run was all business. This run was all business. I was taking safety strats. I was doing everything to preserve my time as best I could. Uh, I wasn't even doing any little funny things. Entertainment value. Um, things that don't save time. There's a new strat here that I believe Warrior Jato discovered, or at least um, helped everybody implement, where you can use Goemon to slide to the top of a ladder and press Z or Z. And then it allows you to levitate really high up, like a hero jump, they call it. And um, if you can throw Rio to stop levitating, so it can skip climbing most of those ladders, all of those ladders. It can skip climbing the ladders. 
and in total it can save about 4 seconds, between 4 and 5 seconds. So I could have gotten a gold split if I'd gotten that strat perfectly, but I went with the safety strat of not even trying, because it could also soft lock the game. Here you see I got the frame perfect glitch, so I did do a little bit of swag entertainment value. The frame perfect weapon swap glitch, which if you do it on the same frame that the dialogue box appears, it does this roulette switching every frame thing, which is really funny. You see, I managed to not lose time on that split, which is a miracle to me. Always lose time on this split. Now Monoshiri Ji-san comes out, or the ghost of him, or some some uh, projection of him at least. So if this witch, you know, she if she's not actually summoning him from the dead, which if you've watched the game casually, you know, then she still has some pretty interesting powers to know exactly how to make a projection of him that looks exactly like him appear and say all the exact things that you need to know to beat the game. So, as fake as that was, I still gotta give that witch props for being able to tell you how to beat the game. It's kinda funny. So again, I did not do the flutter strat out of safety. A lot of safety in this run. And uh, when I go for better times, I'm probably gonna grind out the more difficult strats, because they're probably gonna become more and more important as I grind more resets. So now we're on our way to get the mermaid power up, and I have 15, you know, 15 coal bond to throw. That's more than enough, but not by much. So I managed to get saved by those coin drops in the ghost toys after making the decision to not try to slide into the camera glitch. Very unconventional routing that I had to do on the fly, and lots of improvised strats in Ghost Toys Castle. Made for an interesting PB, that's for sure. Alright, so this is just mashing. Uh, my mash didn't go very well at the start of this minigame, so I think I get a 35. A lot of Goemon boys like to get 36 on this minigame. I, myself included, enjoy a 36. But you can't always get one. You know, your arm's a little tired, you've been streaming for six hours. Mashing's one of the first things that starts to go. Luckily that's pretty much the only required mashing in the run. Um, I like to mash through dialog boxes to try and save a few frames. And, you know, it adds up over the run. And then there's mashing coming up as the mermaid. Mashing A swims faster than holding B. And uh, you know you do get your arm does get pretty tired during that one. So it's I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie I'm not perfect at it. But we're on our way to the submarine. We'll see how it goes down. I'd already by today you'll like it says there possible time save 24 seconds. By today I had already improved my gold split on the submarine twice in two back-to-back -back runs. That's the frame perfect Mokori slash that I was talking about. So there we go. The swag is starting to show up in the back half of the run. We got a we got a frame perfect slash there. I'm starting to feel a little better about the run, so Yai sing Yai Chan will sing along with the music. I jump into the wrong part of the water here. Or at least the part that I'm not familiar with. So I have to kind of turn to the right. You'll see. Instead of going straight down, I had a slight adjustment where I turned to the right there. Mm -hmm. so Suboptimal. Suboptimal. As we head to the sub. But I hit the switch pretty well. And, you know, it doesn't matter that much. Yeah, earlier in the stream I managed to get Swag Slash three times in a run. Three out of three. Which I don't know if anyone's ever done in a run. Well, I'm sure DCX has done it. Sadly, that run tied my PB. That's something I didn't mention. Today, earlier when I was doing attempts, I tied my PB. I got a 120-11. And I didn't save the splits. I saved the golds. It had a couple golds in it. 
Because like I mentioned, I got gold splits on the submarine in two back-to-back -back runs. So I was doing well today. Things were starting to come together in the back half of the run. Ghost Toys has not been good today. Well, Ibisu Flutter in... Uh, I'm going to address Wario Jato in the chat. Ibisu Flutter in Festival Temple Castle is a new strat that actually saves a, a decent chunk of time. And it's significant enough that it really isn't all that much swag. It's pretty much something I'm planning to learn to improve my time. And uh, something that could be really useful in a world record run. As opposed to Macquarie Slash, which saves a few frames and is frame perfect. The other thing about the Flutter strat is it's not frame perfect. Alright, so I had a little bit of a, a mix-up climbing this. And oh yeah, this is a huge mistake here. Um, I had no... I had no luck fighting this guy. I, terrible fight. Cost me some health. Cost me too much health. And cost me time. Cost me too much time. So, we're not going to get a gold split now, but... If I can get these chopsticks, which I don't! I fall into the bowl. I don't know why. I think I must have jumped too early. <clears throat> like, I should have held forward for a little bit longer and then jumped to do that chopstick strat. So, sadly, we lost our chopstick strat. That sucks. It would have been nice to have had that time save. And like I said earlier today, I had two back-to-back -back gold submarine splits. Which, of course, had all perfect chopsticks. And it would have been nice to have that additional 25 seconds. But, yeah. <clears throat> Sadly. We didn't manage it. Now, this one's very important. That's a chopstick strat that if you miss, you can lose a shit ton of time, so... Thankfully, I got that one. I mean, thank the Heavenly Father, Ramen, for not missing that, that chopstick. And I still saved three and a half seconds with a pretty below par submarine. So That's because in my old PB, I went the wrong way in the ocean. I, I had a really bad movement error in my old PB, and I couldn't get to the submarine fast. So there's still time to be saved there in the future. I think my voice is going to start making an appearance in the run soon. Um, I sing along to the impact themes. I'm still doing that even though I've stopped doing runs with Mike because I think the chat likes it. I like it. So once we get through this cutscene, I'll, I'll stop talking and you can listen to me sing the impact theme song again. I can listen to myself sing it. Hear how you guys... I can hear how you guys hear it. But yeah. Again, even being even with PB at this point would have been okay. Like, there's so much time to be saved in the end of the game. But now it's like, I could save so much time before this part in a future run. So I'm not going to be as happy if I'm not ahead of the run in the future by this point. Oh, yeah, here's my mic. I heard it's come right in. And uh, please enjoy... My rendition of I Am Impact. Tadash, Moel Tayo, Seni Ukete, Yukzo, Hashin, Mashin Gapunaru. これは機械と鉄人だ。へい、今時半なってよ。鋼の魂。行くぜ。ブレイクダウン。悪い奴らを打ち壊せ。必殺必殺限界パワーだ。野球でパンチ。俺はクオーチャス。あ、インパクト。
All right, so my microphone wasn't working properly, and you can only hear that in the left ear, or the left side of stereo sound, so I apologize for that. Uh, that'll happen again at the end of the game, and I left some comments after the game, so if you've watched the the submission video that I'm going to submit of the PB actually being played live, it'll include the comments afterwards, and that uh, those are going to be in the left ear only. <laughs> if you've already heard that. Or if you're going to watch that. I'll stop this commentary um, before those comments are made, I think. Yeah. So this won't this won't show the um, this won't show the credits or anything. Anyway, yeah, I don't don't go for anything fancy here. I'm fed up at this point. I just want a PB. I just hold up, hit the stuff in front of me, and hope for a good boss fight here. This is another thing that I got a gold been getting gold splits on recently. Is this boss fight? I've just been slightly and slightly and slightly more perfect at it. Meiwaku no Mameido. Tai Samba 2. Squawk. So it's hard to time that grab there. I still miss it on occasion. Luckily managed to get the health bar on screen. At this point... I pretty much rely on being able to see that health. If I don't, there's a pretty high chance I'm going to miss one of the combos. And there we go. We get him down to 1080 in the first phase. Which is... I think that's the best option. I don't know if there's a way to do it faster. Might be better to not do those two punches at the start, but then it's I couldn't scroll the health bar on screen. I need that mathematical... Health bar strat. Here we go, get him down to 450. Big old kick. And the laser came out really fast. One quick rotation of the C buttons is all it took. And uh, that's that's what made that boss fight very perfect. Very perfect. <laughs> as close to perfect as it's ever been. As you'll probably see, I think this is a gold split. If it's not, it's off by gold by like less than a tenth of a second or something like that. It's, it's pretty much as perfect as close to perfect as you can get on this boss fight. Yeah, it's it's a gold split, so I'm very excited about it. Saved half a second somehow. So now I'm pretty excited. 30 seconds ahead of the run. Still on a 117 pace, although that's pretty much unattainable. It's got a lot of frame perfect... Uh, there's the, 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 let me get into this here. Let me, let me talk about the big... Elephant in the speed running of Room of this game. The dialogue skips. I briefly brought it up earlier when we were on top of the dragon. Japanese name for it is Kaiwa Kansuru. Conversation cancels. They are huge! They are the new big thing for saving time. Even in world record. They're, it, it's almost going to get to a point pretty soon where you got to get them. And they're frame perfect pauses. But they save a lot of time. There's three of them that are useful in the run. The there's one that saves a ton of time and there are two slightly smaller ones. Uh, there's like a medium one and, a, and, a, and then the really small one which is on the dragon. So in this PB attempt that I'm doing right now, I'm just gonna spoil it, I don't get any of them. This run doesn't get them any at all. And so if I got all three of them, it would automatically be like 45 seconds faster just with those three dialogue skips. So it's gonna get to a point one day where we're just grinding for him. And uh, he he here's the Kappa. Say hello to the Kappa. Alright, I'll address Wario Jado again. He's, he's uh, pretty good at doing some glitch hunting for the game and he's found new strats. Uh, Wario Jado, I'm talking about that one. Those are the three I'm talking about. The one in the final cutscene, the one on the dragon, and then the other one. Uh, the one in Ghost Toys doesn't save enough time to even be worth doing at all. Pausing it will lose you time. A lot of time. If you get it, you save like half a second or something. <laughs> ah, we get to hear some uh, item switching to the music here. Everybody's favorite. 
Uh, I fucked this up. Levitation out of the water. I was just getting too jittery. I was too excited. So I messed that up. Cost me some time there. Yeah, one second on Ghost Toys. So it's not worth it. Because it's a frame perfect pause. The other ones save like 8 seconds, 11 seconds, 30 seconds, respectively. So it's like. <clears throat> those ones are important. You can save like 45 seconds or more if you do them well. So really, I think the future of world record attempts are going to be very cognizant of those Kaiwa cancels, and it's going to be important. Yeah, there are parts of the game where if you pause to skip the dialogue, you can actually do it, but then you can't progress the game properly. You can do it... When uh, you hand the super pass in to the guy, to the Mombang guys in the first village, they'll just never open the gate, or they'll stand by the gate and you won't be able to move. Yeah, there's, there's just some places where it'll soft lock the game. But there's three really, really good ones for speed running, and then yeah, the fourth one on Ghost Toys, which saves one second. But there's three that are seriously going to become important for world record attempts. I talked over all of my uh, item switching there. Trust me, it's beautiful. You can watch the non-commentary version to hear it. Yeah, the uh, <clears throat> the submarine dialogue skip, I've done it. It messes with the RTA. Um, you can skip the cuts, the dialogue in the submarine. And then it messes with the future of the game where you can't really get the kappa to appear. Um, yeah, those things are important to the, the progression of the game. So I don't know how the task manages to skip that dialogue, but RTA right now has tried doing it and it's managed to do it, but it messes with the game. We don't know how to make it viable in a run. Uh, that's something we can talk about in the future. So this festival temple castle, that's a good slide right there. <clears throat> There's a jump you can just do where you just jump and I'm probably going to start going for it in the future. But I also get a good slide there. And I take it super safe by collecting more Koban. So, so far, this is a very good Festival Temple Castle by my standards. I'm very happy with it so far. We're just going to keep on rolling. Just keep on rolling. There's even a slide you can do in that room with the spike ball. Probably saves time. <coughs> There's all sorts of shit in this game that saves time that people haven't done yet, or that people are working on currently, like DCX. I know if you're watching, keep at it. There's some strategies he's uh, going to implement if he ever tries to go for a, a better time, which I'm sure he will. I mean, if you're going to hold the world record in the game, might as well make it good. <laughs> right now it's at a, a 116.59. <laughs> Could definitely sub 116. He could save a whole fucking minute. Um, he could probably even save two minutes. Sub sub 115 is possible RTA with current strats. And this is the big strat. If I had intentionally slipped on that fishtail and slipped over to the ladder as Goemon and then jumped, I could have levitated all the way to the top of this screen, shot my Kolban, and made it right to the door. Um, DCX is saying he thinks that saves like a chunk, like 12 to 15 or something, seconds wise. Still, I went for the classic strat of getting the first Koinobori cycle, which I got. Uh, I got it decisively, I got a very quick slide there. So I'm feeling good about that. All the slides in this castle were good. Now there's one more slide, and it's the most important one! And then, yeah, if you get the ledge grab there, which I think is caused by repeatedly tapping A. Uh, then the enemies will hit you. I hate that. <clears throat> but yeah, this uh, this boss, Tsurami. Alright, so... You gotta slide into the podium. Which I get right away. Which is rare for me. I usually F that up. Then I'm gonna go for the strong hit, but Tsurami's too high up. So, I lose a little bit of time here. Gotta go for the regular swing. Now, I figured if you jump 
while Sarami is occupying your space, then it helps position helps that positioning so that you can get those fire Kobon off into him. Which I get. <clears throat> I get all three of them. Which hardly ever happens for me. I have a very bad track record with this boss. And it went down really fast. And the rest of the castle was pretty good. Really good by my standards. All this stuff is good enough for me. And so right now, I, I, I remember putting the controller down during that explosion and lifting my hands in the air. I was so happy that I finally had a run that was ahead going into this castle, and the castle went really well. You see Goemon jumps off the wrong side of that podium, but I don't even care. I saved time. I got another gold split, and we're a minute ahead of the run. 59.3 seconds. This is where you can do a Kaiwa cancel. I miss it. And I'm very disappointed, because getting that one would have been nice. <clears throat> yeah, that's got to be like a tenner. A tenner or a twelver. That saves a chunk of time. That skips right up to Ronko yelling at you. Uh, or laughing at you, I guess, is what she's doing. <laughs> it skips right up to that part, so it skips all the dialogue before that. So in the future runs, it's all about the Kaiwa Cancel, man. I'm telling you. Those are going to be just so sweet when you get good runs that also manage to execute those dialogue skips. It'll just be the sweetest feeling because it'll have that fat time save. And then future runs from comparing against those are going to be hell because you're going to have to hope you can somehow manage to stay on top of the run and like pray you can get those those dialogue skips. But right now I'm still happy because I know for a fact that my current gold split can be improved without getting the Kaiwa skip on this on this next split on this next split I don't need the dialogue skip to get a new gold it would have been nice it would have made it easier to get that gold but I don't need it that means that this current split which says right there 36 seconds 0.81 of potential time save that could be f more than 46 46 plus seconds to save on this split and uh, let's see how it goes in this to compare with this new PB. So just got to head on over to the final castle. And yeah, my heart is already racing at this point. I've never had a run this good. I've never had a run this pace. It still says 117 pace. 117.45. And we get the final swag, Makori Slash. Gave me a nice little Makori right in my, right in my pants. So this one went 2 for 3. It got both the Yaichan slides. Slashes, rather. Do a little singing with Yai here. Yeah, really weird audio, but the run is legit. And you have to skip that cutscene there. Missing that one is a huge piss off, because it's so easy. You just have to get in the door's loading zone before you let go of map glitch. There's a map glitch strat you can do in this room. Save some frames, but uh, I haven't learned it. That'll be another one i got to practice out. And now we're on our way to the final, uh, final castle. It's got a lot of tough tricks. It's got a lot of trolly sections to it. And like I said, I didn't get the dialogue skip beforehand, so I'm thinking it's going to be tough to save a bunch of time, but I could save some. And even if I don't, I got a pretty hefty cushion for a PB, you know. I don't need a 117.45 on this run. That can be a later one. By the way, that best possible time includes the final dialogue skip, which saves 20 seconds. Or at least 18 seconds when I got it. So the final dialogue skip is included in my sum of bests. Just keep that in mind. So here's a relatively new strat. I actually managed to get the levitating water slide which uh, skips one of the jumps you need to do, but that, that pushes you up, clips you up, and, and saves a good chunk. Unless it saves like a, maybe a, maybe eight seconds over walking all the way around. So I'm glad I got it really quick. I practiced it a lot. That's one of the new strats that I did implement in the run, because it's still relatively safe. Finally, I get that slide pretty good. I've had so many runs lose time to that particular slide. I get a good ladder clip there. Decent start to the castle. 
even get a nice jump there. So we're on our way, but there's still a lot of shit to go. So I haven't stopped clenching. My heart is racing. I'm actually... That's the problem here. I'm starting to get a little jittery. And it's going to start affecting my gameplay, and you'll see that pretty soon. So I zoom in. And I'm all jittery. I can't get this slide. I remember this. I was freaking out. I was trying to take deep breaths, center myself. It just wasn't coming out. I was j jiggling the joystick like a madman. And I got that one, and I knew I had to do it again. There's still four slides that are required in the speed run to go. Now, one of them doesn't have to clip, but that leaves three... Or there's five if you count the swag slide. So two of them don't have to clip. But there's three important slides left to go in the game. And I do a very safe method of this one, but I still get so jittery. I can't slide! At this point, I'm just... I'm so glad the mic wasn't on, because I would have been cursing and screaming. Instead, when I was by myself, no chat, no mic, I was taking deep breaths. And, yeah, I was pissed. I was, I was like, oh, I'm choking it all away. Everyone's going to see this and know that I choked my, choked my PB away yet again. I got tons of time. And it's so bad. It's it's so bad. My hand's shaking here. It's it's just the worst case of nerves on this slide. Finally get it, and I'm like, let's take this as safe as fucking possible now, because I don't want to waste that. And now we're at two required slides left in the game, or th uh, three rather, three required slides, and they all have to clip. They have to clip through the wall. And I'm freaking out because we've we're already starting to lose time on the gold. We're gonna lose time overall on the split if I don't make this slide right away, and I'm still jittery as all fuck. I can't get a slide to save my life. Uh, this is like this is what you gotta practice for somehow to be emotionally prepared for when you're about to get a really good PB, and not mess up the way I just did. And you see, I actually lost time on a split where I could have saved 35 seconds. So, that didn't feel too good, but this is still the best run I've ever done of the game. It's still the fourth best run anyone's ever done of the game. So, it can only go up from here. You know, it can go down from here, but it, it'll go up from here eventually. So the first slide attempt through that wall didn't clip, pissed me off. Luckily the second one did. I've managed to lose a lot of time to that slide sometimes. And this is the easiest clip in the game. I've actually had it troll me before. And here we go. After all that jitterness, we get the swag slide at the end of the game. And then I'm still jittery. I'm still freaking the fuck out. I can't believe how much my nerves were affecting me at this point in the game. I can only imagine how it would have been with Mike. And it's because of how long it's been since I PB'd. It's because of how many attempts I've done and how many of them have failed. And I did not want another one to fail. So I just, you know, it was, it was very difficult to maintain that level of focus at this point in the game. And here it is. This is very important that I don't fuck this up too. This rotating room has trolled me many a time where ABC Mario just falls flat on his face and then I have to wait for the platforms to appear, or like, the holes to go around, and it takes a long time. That enemy's fucked me in the past. I get the ledge grab, but wait some time. You see, I still didn't manage to save any time on this split. But here we go. We're running, and we're still on PB pace. And I'm really close to it. I paused a few frames too early. No dialogue skip for me. That would have been a third place Clint, uh... Clencher. <laughs> Clench? Clincher? I would have definitely had third place if I'd gotten that dialogue skip, because it saves 18 to 20 seconds. And it's oh so sweet when you get it, because it skips right to the stage song. Which, by the way, I sang live during the run, so I'm going to mute my current microphone, and your left ears will get the pleasure of hearing me sing for another few minutes. I'm going to use this time to go to the restroom. I'll be right back. Mayo 
my stage, gorgeous, my stage. Konisakuyara, kamai kaori, futai tsutsu melody, sweet melody. Yume no tsuzuki konya wa, ogo plus my, my stage. Dum dum dum. ハシンが鳴る俺を湧き返った鉄人だへい今解き放てよ鋼の魂行くぜ必殺必殺限界パワーだ百裂パンチこれはゴージャスハーインパクト And my heart was still racing at this point because I had had some bad luck with Balbera race recently. I had a few runs die to Balbera. A few PB pace runs, even. So I was thinking to myself, just remember, aim that laser a little farther to the left, make sure you get through there, don't mess it up too much. And, and and get that two cycle on Balbera. That's all I'm thinking. And then after that, make sure you get a perfect de 12 fight. So these boss fights right now, I need them. I need them to be as best as they can be. Because I, you know, I already know that I can't get a sub 119. But I want that low 119, you know. I already know that without the dialogue skip, a sub 119 is impossible at this point. We get a good laugh track there to finish this off. And I'm still not quite sure what my actual best possible time is because of that new gold split I got with the dialogue skip at the end of the game. That totally messes with your gold splits because if you don't get it, you don't know what your final time's gonna be <laughs> until after you beat Balbera. And uh, again, I was still really nervous about Balbera trolling me because. This ass of a boss has done so in the today and yesterday quite a lot. Managed to get all the mini asses down pretty quick. So I'm a little bit yet yeah, farther to the left, thinking carefully on it, and there we go. <clears throat> and I looked up at the timer over here and I was like, oh, how am I losing so much time? And I still don't really understand how. I kind of want to go back and watch my old PV to see how I split, because I feel like the old strat that I used on Belbera was to use the beam last, and I think I split at the start of the beam cutscene. So it kind of messed with everything, and that's why it looks like I can save 22 seconds here, because the split was so late this time. Um, it just is. It just it's just a weird thing. Like, I didn't actually lose seven seconds. I just didn't have any time to gain. So it's like... And then, 
Ditoil gives us an ungrabbable starting pattern, which pissed me off. I gotta see if there's a way to grab him faster. Not that big a deal. I managed to stun lock him here. Um, and I'm thinking if it's perfect, it's gonna be a 119.14. At this time, I don't remember Tangier's time, and I don't remember Cracker Beans' time. But I know that Cracker Beans is probably better than 119.14. And I think Intangers might be too. So I'm thinking I'll still be in fifth place, but I'll be like right there with the other two, two runners, the third and fourth place runners. And I get that laser beam out so fast, and that's it. And the game's over. I got it. And there oh. you, can, you can hear me celebrating. You'll hear all the comments. I'll let you guys now watch the other video. That was a very, very long standing PB. Yeah, thank you guys for listening. Uh, I'm going to cut this video here, and if you want to hear me celebrating, I suggest you watch the live run where I talk after the run ends. Thank you guys so much. Pretty close to the 118, man. <laughs> and I'll see one. you next time I try to do PB attempts on this. Would have been so sweet. We'll cut I, it some I of this. I had that 118 ready for so long. This was a really weird run.